When I arrived here and was looking for your office, someone told me that it's easy to find because you have all of these things attached to your door. And well, they tell, they tell a lot about my interests, that, which are eclectic and, um, uh, and ever-changing. So this, this wall here next to my office and that wall, um, what happens is that as things strike my attention and I put them up here, and eventually this wall will be covered by clippings and, and things that I find that I think are worth sharing. My students who are waiting to, for office hours will sit out here and I figure I'll give them a whole you know, political education. Some of it, of course, is, is just personal stuff. This is my son's, one of my son's plays that was at Juilliard. Um, he's a playwright, and so I have his... What's his name? Up. His name is Zaid Dorn. Okay, I see it. And that's, there. you know, uh, here's Haki Matabudi, the great Chicago poet, who is also the publisher of my latest book. Um, and uh, he's the, the founder of Third World Press. And then, of course, I have all, you know, my human rights um, uh, campaign for uh, gay rights, and, and which I think is very important. And so I have a couple of jokes up here that even the most retrograde people tend to like. A couple of dogs walking along and one saying to the other, he rubbed your belly and it felt good. That doesn't make you gay. Then what happens is the wall grows. Here's Martin Luther King with a very powerful quote. Um, from May 1967, and so on. And so the wall grows, and then at some point somebody complains, and then the dean sends me a note and says, this wall doesn't belong to me, the door belongs to me, but the wall belongs to, is part of the public square, and therefore I have to take everything down. So then I take everything down, and then it starts over. So that's the story of my wall. And then the door similarly. Um, you know, I'm, I'm an education professor, so I have to have the chalkboard with I must remember to be cheerful and obedient written over and over. And that is a picture of you here, the Merchant Marine. I was in the Merchant Marines in 1964, yeah. I, uh, I had dropped out of Michigan and I uh, joined the Merchant Marines, and that's my Merchant Marine identity card. Yeah, these are my three kids who so are now all grown. He's a, he's a teacher in Oakland, California now, but that's him at about eight years old and he's now a playwright and a teacher at Columbia University. He's an author and a first year law student at Yale. These are kids I went to college with. Do you know who those are? This is a test. Those are the children of the Rosenbergs um, who were executed for being Adam spies and he and I were very good friends at the University of Michigan and we're still friends. This is Oh, and this is my, my, my playwright son and, and his wife, and she's a novelist and, uh, and a poet. The place is a little crowded because I've been here 20 years, and it just gets crowded. But I have up there, I have, uh, you see, I, keep, I have a couple of dolls. That's W.E.B. Du Bois on, on the left and Jane Addams on the right. I gave the Jane Addams doll to one of my granddaughters, and she said, ooh, this is horrible. And I thought, oh, no, I've turned her against social justice activism. But uh, it's not the cutest doll in the world, but it's one of my favorite heroes in, in Chicago history, Jane Addams. Those are my three kids. Yep, those are my three kids. And that's us at our place in California that I mentioned. That's us in California about 12 years ago, I think. Um, and several of my students have published books. This is uh, of Borders and Dreams, which is was the doctoral dissertation of Chris Carger. Uh, this is a really terrific and important book by one of my doctoral students, Holler If You Hear Me, by Greg Mitchie. These shelves are, are actually um, for my research class because I teach classes in qualitative or interpretive or narrative research. And one of the things we do is we read a lot of examples of qualitative or interpretive research. We try to see what other people have done. For example, this is a tremendous book about, about street vendors in New York City. Uh, and Mitch Dunier became, kind of hung out with these guys and then became a street vendor. And one of the things I love about this book is besides writing an ethnography of, of um, kind of the street scene in New York at the time when Giuliani was trying to get these guys off the street, he ends up with an afterword written 
by the, the man that he was studying. This is the subject of the book, but now he gets to write back. So that's him right there. Yeah, and he gets to write back and say, Dunier got this right and this not so much. And, and here's another one that is a classic that I love so much. Um, it's called All God's Dangers, The Life of Nate Shaw. My doll collection includes Nelson Mandela, of course, um, Frederick Douglass, Geronimo. That's the cover of a book that I edited. And that woman, Maxine Green, was my mentor at Teachers College, um, Columbia University. The other book that I just found on my desk that I'll show you is um, the Berkeley High School Slang Dictionary. This is a dictionary that my brother, um, who just retired as an English teacher at Berkeley High School, uh, put together year after year. And it's a very, very smart book about language and the plasticity of language and the ways in which kind of the master language is always undermined by insurgents, by um, uh, immigration, by minority communities of all kinds, including youth communities. The opening word is ait. Ait. Okay, good, fine, from all right. I'll be down in a minute. Ait. That's the opening word. And the final word in the book is uh, zook, a man dressed in Latin style, very stylishly and carefully dressed. Man, that guy was a real zook. So what's a scraper? A scraper is an, a noun. It's an old school car, usually a Buick, often fixed up with fancy loud stereo systems. So to use it in a sentence, remember my son's name is Malik and he was the coach at Berkeley High School of baseball. He was the baseball coach at Berkeley High School. And so here's using it in a sentence. Coach Malik's baby blue scraper got slap. What the hell is slap? Well, you gotta look that up too. Uh, Cause you know, you and I don't speak this language. And this book really was a bestseller in the Bay Area uh, because it went commercial and people really found it intriguing. The best thing I've ever done in my life is to raise three extraordinary kids. And the most fun I have these days is taking care of my grandchildren. You have any pictures of them here? Yeah, I have tons of pictures of them. <clears throat> That's, um, there's one, there's one. What's her name? Dalen. That gives me a lot of a lot to do, and I also the other thing I like about taking care of my granddaughters is that um, it's not only kind of personally satisfying and wonderful to watch kids grow up and to watch their minds work and to watch them make the connections you know that we take for granted and to have them looking at the world in a different way, but also I feel like it's useful because I have these uh, my son and my daughter-in-law are extraordinarily hardworking themselves and they're both artists and they're both kind of in the early parts of their projects and work. So it actually, I think, is of some use. And what do you want when you're 65? You want to be of use. So I feel like I am. In-Depth airs live at noon Eastern on the first Sunday of each month on Book TV on C-SPAN 2. Log on to booktv.org for information about upcoming guests.